and welcome here to the tracker on city tv tracking is our business now originally today we were slated to have an exclusive with um former black stars defender lee adi but due to some uh, unforeseen circumstances that could not happen but the situation remains still thriving we are going to go around the world and talk about some of our Ghanaian brothers who have been making moves this particular transfer window there are others who have been making their loan deals permanent and there are others who are also seeking further loan deals i'm talking about ajiman bedu uh, he plays for hellas verona kojua samoa plays his football for inter milan but there's interest in his services we'll be talking about that and i'll be Asking, or I'll be telling you why Victoria Guimaraes has become such a hot spot for Ghanaian players. Now they have four Ghanaians already in the mix. In the past, they uh, also had guys like William Tierro. So Victoria Guimaraes is definitely one of those places where our Ghanaian brothers love to ply their trade. And then in Turkey, Ben Admensa is on the move. Joseph Atamalawe is on the move as well. So there's a lot to talk about here on the tracker. When we come back, I'll introduce my guests and then we begin the process of tracking. Welcome back to the tracker here on City TV. My good friend is here. Um, the king of headlines <laughs> is what I call him. If it's about football and it's about um, the legalities of football, it's about policy of football, it's about getting in depth with a discussion, this guy right here is your guy. Seydou Adamu is my man on the show today. Seydou, yes, sir. it's good to have you on the yes, show. Yes, it's good to have you. To have you, for you to have me as well. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get today's discussion uh, rolling along real yeah. quick. Victoria Guimaraes, they, they, yeah. they seem to have become a hot spot for Ghanaians. Yeah. Like, I, like I said in my intro, in the past they had William Tierro. Yeah. Uh, they've had Al Hassan Wakaso at yeah. a point. Yeah, that's Wakaso. Yeah. Now they have Gideon Mensah. Gideon Mensah was playing in Belgium. I thought he was doing okay. Um, He's joined Guimaraes on loan um, from Zolte Warajeb. I'm a bit puzzled at this move, if you ask me personally. But there are those who say that the Portuguese league is a step up from the Belgian league. I'm not sure how you feel about that situation and how you feel this will work out for Gideon Mensah. Well, um, thank you so much for um, the opportunity once again. I believe, just like you mentioned, Guimaraes on the scale of preference yeah. in terms of European League, in terms of European club football, yeah. is somewhere ahead of the, the lower tier clubs or the, the clubs below the third forces in mm -hmm. uh, the Belgian League. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you take Anderlecht, you take some, somehow K Gent, yeah. you take somehow RCK yeah. Genk, the rest, you, you would... Maybe you, standard Liege. Obviously, standard yeah. Liege. Because Gumeres is the, one of the four most strongest clubs in Portugal. Take Porto, take uh, Benfica, Braga, take, Benfica, take Sporting. Mm -hmm. Not even Braga. I mean, Braga came into Braga the picture. Had their spell. Yes, they, they had their spells a few years ago. But Gumeres had been a strong force in the last seventy-two years in Portugal, and yeah. they, they also have um, some good transfer history yeah. in terms of players that turn out, and also have a good development plan for players. Therefore, if you look at the age of, I mean, Abdul Momin, age of um, Gideon Mensah, who for made a move to the and. I, I like the move because of the positions the two players play. Mm -hmm. Central defender, right back, or yeah, I mean, back. at the moment can play a central yeah. defender also can play at the right wow. back. You have Gideon Mensah on the left back, so that partnership yeah. could be there. And now I'm going into the national team mm -hmm. in terms of how they progress, in terms yeah. of how they develop into the national team. So I think I would say the Portuguese league is a is a step ahead than yeah. the Belgian league, and therefore. I mean, Zerto Warajem and the rest, they even hardly qualify to play in any European championship. True. True. You would have rumors. Maybe a Europa a, League. Europa League. Yeah. And even sometimes make it into the it's group stage. Yeah. So I think it's a step ahead than. But for Gideon Mensa, I'm a bit surprised with this very move because hmm. just a year from now, yeah. he was scouted by Barcelona. And the, the deal was that he joins the Barcelona B mm -hmm. for 
a year with the possibility of promotion to the main team. I don't know why that move didn't materialize because I feel that he still could have a chance in the main Barcelona team. Looking at how Jody Alba has played and not mm -hmm, having a mm -hmm, very mm -hmm. concrete replacement for him at Barcelona and also taking into consideration that Barcelona is going through some transformation and there's a new coach, there's a new policy. There's a lot to, there's to prove a lot from players to prove who are in the, players. In the mix, yes. yeah. So, I mean, I felt that that move a year ago was, was good, but I mean, he chose not to go to that, that club. Mm -hmm. He's so young and there are more opportunities ahead. So... I think I, 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 I am for the move at this stage. Hold, hold your thoughts there. Don't, don't commit the move yet. <laughs> we'll be coming to you in a bit. Let's listen to Gideon Mensah himself. He's been speaking uh, since he made that transfer from Zolte Warajam to uh, Victoria Guimaraes. Let's listen to him. Hi, everyone. My name is Gideon Mensah. I'm 22 years of age, and I'm very happy to join the club. I'm ready to fight for the club. Ryan Little. I must say I'm very happy to be here, and then um, I was looking forward to for this challenge. So... Um, I couldn't wait to be here, so um, I mean, the feeling is very great being here. I know with Joseph Moamo and then also Wakasu, but then uh, I mean, I played uh, with Joseph in Ghana um, in the academy, and then Moomin is like I have the same agent with Moomin, so we speak almost every day. So the relationship with Moomin is uh, more closer, but then um, I know Joseph a very long time ago. Um, I have uh, special abilities just like any other player. Um, I'm very fast on the field, and um, I like to play forward. Most of the times, um, and I love to move forward with the ball. And also defending, I'm, I'm very tough. And it's not so easy to go against me, I mean, to go past me. So I must say that's the, the most part of my abilities. Yes, yeah, so you saw... Gideon Mensah there, new signing for Victoria Guimaraes. It looks like such a wholesome atmosphere yeah. already. He seems yeah. already in tandem with yes. everybody I, in the mix. I like the confidence level. And uh, he seemed to, to, to believe that this is a place he can command the first team play. Don't forget that he's still a player of Red Bull Salzburg. True. And I like their, their style. They, they, would, they are not that typical club that will let a player sit on the bench and do nothing. They want you send you out to prove a point mm -hmm. and if possible come back so it also raises a question as to why mm -hmm. he's unable to make that uh, red bull team because mm -hmm. this is about the fourth movie yeah. speaking after yeah. it, moving to stormgrass mm -hmm. so to gem and to this very club yeah. so the question is why is he unable to break into the red bull Salzburg team in austria mm. why is why is none of theirs uh, red bull clubs yeah Picking him up. Picking him up in the, I mean, in terms of uh, yeah. the Leipzig, in terms of New York. New York, yeah. Why is, in, why is none of them coming after him? So we would have to ask more questions, even despite the fact that I believe that this move is good for him. But the question is, even at Red Bull, mm -hmm. and I will rate um, um, Victoria Gumerus ahead of Red Bull, yeah. why is he not making that cut? What is the contractual agreement to the extent that he's unable to fit yeah. into the team? Let's talk about his confidence and... Um, ideal teams because you mentioned that and i think that's interesting i've watched Gideon mentor play i yeah. think he's he's up there with every young up and coming yes. left back in yes. the world yes he can play in any big team yes. if you ask me especially with his offensive play exactly and then you saw how he was carrying himself when yeah. his team was introducing him and everything his professionalism is up there so yeah. i mean if if you if you would ask yourself again what, what do you think is holding them back from making moves to bigger clubs. For instance, you mentioned the Barcelona deal yeah. where it looked like he had a chance, at least, of being, worst case scenario, a reserve player. Yeah. For, I remember when Barbara Man signed for Chelsea, there was a lot of skepticism about whether he would be good enough for Chelsea. I thought he was good enough for Chelsea. Yeah. It seems as if every time a Ghanaian player is primed for a move to a big club, there are always those in the background saying, if I can borrow the phrase, he not reach. Yes, um, probably it's, it's, of, it's because of the recent uh, I mean, experiences. Because in the past, our mm -hmm. players have made it. Mm. Let's take um, ACN yeah. from Bastia to Lyon, yeah. then to Chelsea. Yep. He made it one time. Then you want to even talk of Asamoah Look at his progress sure. from Udini to Rene to then to Sunderland. Mm. There are a number of players who've made it. But the point is, do, do our players go to the right leagues? 
at their youth level. Because mm. in the past, we had our players moving to the Italian league. Yeah. Then, more or less, they, they are loaned to their feeder clubs in the yeah. Serie A. I mean, La Liga. Yep. Or sometimes the La Liga Santander. Then, they make their progress. Because Italy, Spain, France, yeah. they have a certain style of play which fits into the top five clubs. But then, if you move away from the top five mm-hmm. to, say, Austria, yeah. to Denmark, to Portugal... Then you are. Then you want to make a move to the main. It, it becomes for them. For me, that's how I see mm. from our recent players. Yeah. They don't start from the mainstream European football like we would have the Ajman Bedou start from Italy. Yeah. You have the Suleiman Tari start from Italy. You have the um, John, even even, uh, yeah. even Steven Apia. Yeah. Steven Apia Palma. moved straight to Parma from yeah. Asifok. So they go straight into the main league. Probably not to the top teams, yeah. but to the main league. But then if you move to Austria. I mean, uh, Austrian league is not even among the top 10 Nobody in Europe. Nobody watches them. Nobody Austria. watches them. If you move to Denmark. So I feel that their stepping stone hasn't been what we expect to see. I feel that their stepping stone should be... It should be a level higher for a level them. Higher, a level higher as yeah. expected yeah. than what they did. Because like Austria, I mean, yeah. if, even Red for Red Bull Salzburg, if not for the experts of Leipzig... Yeah. How many people would have known, known that they were, they were actually there? Yes. So, so I, I think it's, it's the stepping stone. Mm-hmm. We've not had the right stepping stone for our clubs in terms of where they move to as their first level. Then, then they move on. How, how long till he becomes unavoidable for the Black Stars left back position? Because I think that's there for the taking. Well, <laughs> I doubt if that is there for the taking now. Despite the fact that Baba Rahman... Mm-hmm. I mean, when he came to the Afcon, he couldn't improve because of yeah. his long injury situation. Lumar Benyanu mm-hmm. has also uh, been there. He's proven. You cannot take away these two players. And I doubt he can fight for, mm-hmm. for that slot or he can walk into that slot ahead of even Agbenyanu. So he needs to fight much harder. And in fact, he need not stay more than a season mm-hmm. in Victoria Gumerez. Yeah. It means that he must give more than 100%. Mm-hmm. If indeed... The national team is his, 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 his catching, or the yeah. national team is his eyeing. Yeah. I think then he, he needs not be spend a, more than a year. Yeah. And I also do not ha- know how much con- uh, of his contract that is left with mm-hmm. Red Bull Salzburg. Yeah. It depends on how much of his contract that is left. If he's going to be a free player after this season, then, then... Then this makes sense. Then it makes sense because his agency can then have a very, better move for him beyond, beyond the Austrian leagues mm-hmm. and even look for a club like Reims. In, in the French, in France, yeah. in France, where we've had some few of our players moving there. And for me, Rims makes lots of sense makes a lot than of even sense Victoria Gumerez. Right. Talking about free transfers and whatnot, like, like I mentioned at the start of this conversation, there are, now there are four Ghanaians there now. Joseph Amor yeah. is in there, uh, Wakaso is in there He's still, in there. and now there's Moomin yeah, and also and um, Gideon. Now, talk to me about Moomin. But you, he, see, you mm-hmm. see the issues. Let me deal with this first. Yeah. Now, the problems with having... One, um, I mean, players from the same nationality in one team is that the, the, there's, there's that high risk of not fielding all of you because, mm. because of this EU policies, because of the homegrown policies, because the homegrown policies true. in some of these countries is very high. Sometimes yep. you must field as many as seven homegrown players. Yes, true. Beyond that, you must field as many as possible European EU players. Then you come to Africa. That is why we have about six players in uh, not just land. Yeah, yeah. And at one point or the other, you have one playing or two playing mm. because of those homegrown policies. So the, this, this is the danger because mm. you have four players in one team all coming from Africa. Yeah, yeah. So the possibility of all of them playing week in, week out is also very limited. And that mm. must be emphasized. That's a very good point. Now, you talk about... I, I see that as a double-edged sword. Like, honestly, like you're saying, it, it helps you to settle down because your Ghanaian brothers are yeah. there, but all of you might probably oh, struggle to get playing obviously. time because yeah. of some yeah. of these technicalities. Now, yeah. Moomin, like we mentioned, Abdul Moomin, also joined from uh, North Zealand. He actually yeah. ended up becoming a free agent, yeah. and then he moved on as a free agent to uh, Guimaraes. That was a surprise for me, uh, yeah. for North Zealand to have let him go free, and then now about to seek... I, I wouldn't even say greener pastures with Guimaraes, but where does he go from this? Because if a team, a development team like Netherlands, will let your contract run down, yeah. it does raise some questions about your value as a player. Yes. Um, I look at his age. He has very good age, 22. Very, very good age on his side. And 
uh, I mean, his physique and everything else is also good. Then you look at the performance. It also goes into the, my initial discussion. Mm-hmm. Did not just land give him enough playing time? Mm-hmm. No. Because there were so many Ghanaians in their team, there were so many um, Africans in their team, and that yeah. they, have, they must give all of them the opportunity. Because not just that, have about six Ghanaians, True. they have one Ivorian, I think they have two Nigerians. And mm-hmm. so at a point in time, yeah. you must give one or two the opportunity. Yeah. And so you must grab that opportunity when it's given. Unfortunately, True. you may not have grabbed that opportunity. And also, mm-hmm. you may not have been able to attract offers within the period. That's very so true. Because That's very they true. are open for offers. Yep. So if no one comes, comes in, comes in they, they, have, they have no option than to let you go. Let's, let's get to Abdul Moment himself. He has also uh, been sharing his thoughts since he made that transfer to Victoria Goemars. Let's hear what he had to say. The first impression has been really good. He was a great player, there is no doubt. And everybody knows that. And I think that the transition between a player to a coach is... Is, 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 is a good one because you, you already know what it feels like to be a player so it's kind of easy to understand players you know and it's easy to pass on the information and the experience that you've been through so I think he's a great step and he's a great coach for us and yeah I just can't wait for the season to start for you guys to see what, what he's been um, coaching us you know trying to teach us on the, on the field. All I can do is help in all aspects I believe either on, on the pitch off the pitch I'll just try and give my, my maximum best to, to help the club achieve their goal. I'm good on the ball, I'm aggressive, I like to give my best for the team. So if the team is doing well, then I'm happy. I think it's, it's, it's a step higher from my, my, previous, uh, my previous team. And then it, it's, it's an environment that demands a lot from uh, the players around. And I, I also like challenges, so I believe that it was, it was the best step for me to take. Personally, I believe that the club will help me reach, uh, fulfill my potential, you know, reach uh, another level in my, in my development. So. It was, it was the perfect environment for me to choose to come here. There are a lot of young guys here. Uh, there are also experienced players here, so it's good to be around experienced players to learn from them, you know. And with the staff and then the coaches, as I said, the coach has like a really rich ex- uh, experience with football. So I believe that, you know, on a day-to-day basis, I can learn a lot from him. So I'm just taking it day by day. Yeah, I think anything is possible when you set your mind to it. But I think the most important thing is to create a culture that is very demanding of ourselves and the players around us. So it's, it's really important that we create a demanding culture, you know, take a, every training serious, you know, give our maximum best and then focus on one step at a time because well, it, it's very possible for us to go to uh, Europa. But the most important thing is to win each game every weekend. So that's, that's our focus. One of the big, the big aspects of the history is their fans. So... Um, I know like at the moment we are playing with our fans because of the whole situation with COVID, but um, we are all hoping that when the, the season starts that we can play with fans. So I'm really expecting, you know, looking forward to meet all the fans and all that. So you heard Abdul Moumin there sharing his thoughts about Victoria Guimaraes, what he expects from himself and how he expects the club itself to help in his growth as a footballer. So do you get the last word yes. on Moumin? Yes, I think um, he's also um, shown lots of his um, confidence and mm-hmm. he knows the, the tax ahead. He's mentioned the, the fans and you know in such clubs, the fans play a key role yeah. in how you develop. And in fact, in Portugal, they have one of the biggest stadiums in Europe where you have about 50,000 watching Huge. you each week. So once he knows the tax ahead, we, I can only wish him well and, mm. and ask that he improves upon his performance, just as he's, he's mentioned. In fact, he mentioned about the environment. Yeah. So clearly he knows what's at stake for him. Yeah. And so, yeah. I mean, we can only wish him well. Well, there's that. Let's get to our next player on the bill, and that's none other than Osman Bukhari. Now, if you've watched the last couple of tracking episodes I've done on the tracker, I have highlighted this young man. He played uh, with the under-23 side that were trying to qualify for um, the Olympic Games. He was Ghana's second highest scorer yeah. in Europe when you take away Andrea when He's actually a winger. So Osman Bukhari, uh, the big exploits definitely attracted the big boys. He's made the move from AS Trensen uh, in Slo- uh, Slovenia. He's now uh, heading all the way to Ghent in Belgium. So big, big, big move for him because... Why don't Ghanaians know this guy? This guy is you're I'm, sco- I'm, I'm, you are I'm, scoring I'm, goals for fun. I'm surprised Ghanaians don't know him because I, I used to write about him a lot when I mean about last year when he joined the national under mm. twenty three team 
and also with AS Tracing because yeah. he gives lots of assists because of how he, his movement. He's a right footer, but plays much more on the left, left yeah. and cuts in into the uh, middle. So yeah. he plays on the left as a winger and can also play as what we call the number eight. But I, I don't, I don't know. Maybe he's not that fanciful. I mean, he's not that. His game is not eye catching. Or yes. maybe, like you said, starting in a place like Slovenia. Slovenia. I mean, yes. And you see, AS Tracy is also not that big team in Slovenia. True. I think they are about the fourth top team there. They, they, they usually struggle to even maintain their, mm -hmm. their, their, their top. Yeah. I mean, their, their, their position on the league log. Yeah. Two years ago, they were seventh out of eight teams mm -hmm. because they played the zonal leagues. Yeah. They were seventh out of eight. So they, they are a struggling side. They, they are a struggling side. So hardly do you get eyeballs. It's not that typical. It's not that typical club that plays in the Europa, mm -hmm. even yeah. at the qualifiers, yeah. where you have the opportunity to. And in fact, for a Ghanaian to be noticed, you have to play in the Europa. You have true, to play in true. virtually the Champions true. League or at least at the qualifiers. Yeah, so true. if your team doesn't make or do not make some of these competitions, hardly would you be known. Don't also forget that at the under 23 level, because of the hard breaks and the blasters not performing, mm -hmm. people do not, I mean, appreciate the players that play. There are lots of comments about why we don't use local yeah. base players. But I feel he's a right talent. Unfortunately, again, in fact, I, I, I dwell much more on physique. Mm. He's diminutive. He's 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 that he's that smallest not, type, smallest not, type yeah. not tall. I think he's about five four or mm. five five, mm. and that would not attract offense from mainstream Europe. So even when I had the the junk junk deal, yeah. I was I was a bit surprised at, yeah. at the start until I realized that it was real because yeah. I spoke to him a year ago mm. about whether he he was being yeah. tracked by. Top Somewhere teams, you know. Yeah. He mentioned that he's had offers within the East, East Africa. I mean, he's in Europe. Europe he's in Europe corridors, but he will fancy. And in fact, he mentioned Belgium specifically that he would love a move to Belgium. So, on on the other hand, I'm not surprised because he feels that based on his body size, yeah, this is a league that can help him. And in fact, the Belgian league has helped. I mean, so many blacks in mm -hmm. our so many African players. Yep. Uh, sure. It gives them the opportunity to play. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how... I mean, he's still young. If he can build up on his talking physique. Of, hold on a second. Talking about still young, for those of you who are wondering who we are going on and on and on about, this is Osman Bukhari. My name is Osman Bukhari. I'm 21 years old. I started my football career in Ghana, in Akadami, called Accra Lions. So... From Akra Lions, then I came to Belgium. That was 2017, 2018 season. I joined Anderlecht. Uh, I played the second team. So from Anderlecht, then I went to Slovakia from, for two years. And now I'm in Belgium back again. And again, it was not that easy, but uh, you know, from Africa to Europe, it's, it's not that easy. So, but I did my best at this level so I'm very happy to be here and I hope to give my best for the team for the fans so I'm very happy to be here yeah Yes, so that's the man there. He signed for Ghent in Belgium. Just final words on him before we move on. We take our first break of the show but I want to see Osman play for the Black Stars. I feel like the Black Stars have all of a sudden become afraid of skillful players. You know, now we can make a case for him. Now that he's come to more or less a mainstream, mainstream league, Europe, yes, because yeah. it was very difficult to always make cases for players on the fringe of Europe. I mean, Slovenia, and well, even not playing the top. I mean, the top team in Slovenia. So mm -hmm. now we can make a case for him because I feel he's one of the most talented young players we have over the over 21 the period. Twenty-one years. Twenty-one years, and. If we want to build a proper national team, we've mentioned about do, or we've mentioned all those uh, under, under twenty boys mm -hmm. that can form a proper national team. And yeah. if we are considering, I think he's one of the boys that must be considered. For mm -hmm. me, I think he's a, he has lots of talents. If we want to replicate or we want to replace the talents that mm -hmm. we've lost in, let's say, Christian Atu, yeah. the talents that we've lost in he's, he's the guy Andre Ayu, these are the talents that. But he must also work hard because you don't expect to play to be playing the fringe. Mm -hmm. He's gone to Belgium. That's yeah. huge move. Yeah. I would expect that within a couple of years, he moves. He can play in the Bundesliga. He can. 
Definitely. I mean, for for the Bundesliga, we can make a case for, for him. him. Mm. And I'm I'm saying all these things based on his physique, based yeah. on his size, yeah. because the La Liga and the um, Syria dwells much more on physique, physique much more yeah. on players that yeah. are um, stoutly built. So I think the Bundesliga should be enough. And even in Belgium, he should be looking at getting to Anderlecht, yeah. which is the top most club. Sides. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's that's the word on Osman Bukhari. If you want to know how good this guy is, his club or his former club AS Trensen prevented him from coming down to continue the qualifiers. There are 23 qualifiers uh, with Ibrahim Tanko's team because they needed him that much to be able to stay up in their league. That's how good his club considered him. Let's take a quick break here. When we come back, we'll take our tickets and our passport and move over to Turkey. And then we might just come back to Africa because there are some in-Africa deals that are happening involving Ghanaian players. Stay right here with us on The Tracker. <laughs> Possible without time. Time is endless motion. Make time work for you. Bet Planet. Time to bet. Election 2020, Ghana makes a choice. Tracking and bringing you reports of the presidential and parliamentary campaigns across the length and breadth of this nation. Analyzing campaign activities and election data with our panelists on the Voters' Diary. The Voters' Diary is the most factual, instructive, and balanced election 2020 analysis program on television. The Voters' Diary, every weekday on City TV from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Stay informed on all the relevant issues on election 2020. Tune into the Voters' Diary, it's Ghana's choice. Welcome back to the tracker here on City TV. The next guy on the show is interesting. The last time he was in this building, this very building, the City TV building, he came to show his skills on FIFA. And he beat absolutely everybody who played against him, except me, of course. So um, next time he's around, I'm sure that he will have to make arrangements to play me. But he's moved. He, he, he played alongside Asamoah at Kayseri Sport. One time he was owned fully by Atletico Madrid. This time around, uh, he's taken his talent to Besiktas, a top-flight Turkish side. Remember that he's still on loan from Kayseri Sport, but he's going to be playing his football with Besiktas in the upcoming season. Bernard Mensa is the guy I'm talking about. Probably has one of the best goal catalogs. If you want to, I mean, compile goals that Ghanaian players have scored in the last five years, nobody might probably come close to him in terms of how outstanding his efforts are in terms of getting the ball in the back of the net. Good move or not? Well, I think it's a very good move. A very, very good move. <laughs> because Kaysera Spore, yeah. as against um, Besiktas. Besiktas. Besiktas is a powerhouse. It's a powerhouse in European football. I know yeah. you are going to... Not just even Turkey. No, it's a powerhouse. It's a powerhouse in European football. They have the resources. They, 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 have pay, their they pay good they money. Pay good they bring good bring in good money. They, they, have, they have the eye for good players. Yeah. And, I mean, they are world beater. So... For him to have that move. And in fact, I think he's, I think Ben Mesa is just one of the most luckiest players. I don't know who his agent is because mm. he keeps get, getting good moves. But unfortunately, probably because he's not any enough national team appearance. Why, so, is, why is that? 
Yes, because when we gave him the opportunity, when I mean, when when he got the opportunity, yeah. he couldn't improve. You guys said, "Don't worry, we are going to." When we gave him the opportunity, he couldn't yeah. improve. He couldn't prove himself. But I think those years were were bad years for him. That was when mm. he had just moved to Atletico Madrid. Madrid yeah. That move went on that, loan to Hetafe. It didn't move, work. That move to Atletico Madrid didn't help his career because he didn't get enough playing time. Nothing seemed to have, have worked that, for yeah. him from that move, and so and. He had to start moving on trans, um, on loans. Yeah. So now that he's getting good, I think he's a good player. He has he's a top talent. Yeah. Still he's, very young. Has age still, on the side. Yeah, still very very young. He has qualities on the field of play. Mm-hmm. But there, you see, there's some kind of aura that comes with players. I do not see that with with Bernard Mesa. What and, do you mean? Like but, he doesn't seem like somebody who wants to play for the national team that much. He doesn't seem. As someone who wants to even play football, to, <laughs> for, 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 that's for, interesting. No, it's, honestly, mm. he's he seemed a bit quiet. Yeah. In terms yeah. of, I mean, if, uh, I I think I can buttress what you're saying. If you uh, met Bernard Mensa in street clothes uh, and uh, and you were told that he was a footballer, footballer you, you would not you, 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 you would be skeptical. But yeah. but he's always done well in the field of play, especially True. when he moved to Turkey. True. He's proved himself, and I think the Shikstar should be able to. Um, um, Help him to get to, to, help the, next him to, get to the level to the, to, to the level that Ghanaians want to see. Not himself. I, I believe he's getting the level that he wants. Well, but the level well. that Ghanaians want to see. At this stage, as selfish as every Ghanaian will want to be, want to be, we want to see our players playing at the top level. We want to see our players playing week in, week out. And we want to see our players turn out top quality performances so that mm. it goes into the favor of the national team. Even when Admessa is playing week in, week out and, and producing, even not even goals, but producing assists. He will be hard why, to ignore. Why shouldn't Sika uh, Akono Definitely consider him when he's continuing players from Israel and the rest? So, no, I mean, these are facts that we... we so True. Because True. he's playing in Turkey. He's playing in the top True. league. He's playing in the top league. He's playing in the top, top team. team. Yeah. So if he's performing, why not? So Hold his performance mm-hmm. should be, be, be to the advantage of Ghanaians. Hold your horses there. Let me... Let's hear from Ben Adventa himself how he feels about this jump to Besiktas and what he hopes will happen during his stay with the powerhouse. Home. Home does not mean a concrete jungle to me to live in. It's the place that you belong to. After you close the door and leave the problem outside. A warm home where sometimes you experience the pain and sometimes the great happiness. Home is the temple where you reach with big enthusiasm while the life is running its course. It's not enough to sleep and wake up. Sometimes you want to spend minutes, hours in it. Sometimes even it's not enough. Being big is not enough as well. The ones that the home contains is also vitally important. There are homes that you move in with desire. Homes that you dream to be happy. And you endure over to make them real. It was not for me to see the highway from the window of my home. My home should have been on the seaside. I am Bernard Mensa. Besiktas is my home. Wow. I think it's, it's, cool. it's, it's cool. I mean, Bernard, it's cool promo. Bernard cool Mensa promo. might just be what? Shakespeare? Yeah. Charles, Charles <laughs> Dickens? Maybe. Let's, let's, let's applaud the, I mean, the production. I, mean, I think it's, it's... Fantastic it's, stuff. It's, it's simple. Looks catching. Yeah. Worth your attention, worth yeah. your time, and yeah. I, I will only hope that he walks the talk. <laughs> now that he's agreed that Besiktas is his new home, yeah. he must feel at home. He must get be, be he must be relaxed because yeah. I mean he's played in Turkey for close to four seasons, yes, yeah. and that should be enough for him to um, to to prove to to Ghanaians and to Atletico Madrid that he could. I mean he's still young. Yeah. Who knows? He could still come back to, yeah. to Diego Simone and his true, boys. <laughs> true, true. Let's 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 stay in Turkey. And this is another guy who has been in and around Turkey. So yeah. Joseph Atamalawe, uh, I remember his Black Stars debut so well. He's been on loan um, at Razorsport. He was with um, Fatih Karagomrok. Actually helped them uh, in their playoffs. Um, now he's moved on from Basak Shehir, who are his parent club. So. He was owned by Basak Shehir, but he spent the last three years on loan. Finally, he's made the move um, to Kayserispor. Kayserispor have actually been relegated from the Turkish top flight, but Joseph, I, I, I believe, is all about 
playing time now, wanting to get his hands and feet dirty. So the national team handlers know that he is still in the picture. How do you read this particular move? Well, it's, a, it's a little strange to me. It's, it's, it's not too strange. For me, Atama has not convinced Ghanaians where exactly he wants to play in terms of his positioning. Hmm. Whether he wants to be a full-time defender okay. or he wants to be a defensive midfielder. midfielder. Because that's how come he's not been permanent in... Not, let me not even talk about national team, with clubs that he plays. Yeah. If you look at his... If you go to transfer market, he's seen as a defensive midfielder, as a right-back, as a central defender. That just confuses a lot they of say, people. Yes. You see, for such top clubs, you must be able to cement a certain position. True. So that... You are you are you are you needed need to be as, a specialist exactly. at something. But to be hovering around certain points. But he himself d doesn't know do not know where exactly he wants to, whether he wants to be a midfielder or he wants to be a defender. And I think he's I mean it's about time he he's he's able to distinguish between where he wants to play. So clubs will get to appreciate him well in terms of where he wants to play. Moving out of the Super League yep. to division one. I mean he was playing for Fatih Karagomrok, so it's yes. just like Stay, really? Yes. Sometimes... I, I sometimes, thought that once they had end promotion, they were going to take him along. Yes. But sometimes contractual agreements do not, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, permit yeah. such moves. Probably, they also, Kishore Aspo needs him to, I mean, qualify to the Super League because they are a big side. Yeah. So, um, it's, 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 it's a bit tricky. It's a bit tricky mm -hmm. how to deal with this issue, yeah. just like the Andrea yeah. issue. It's a bit tricky. Sometimes your club wants you to help in promotion. Sometimes mm -hmm. you also have ambitions. And, I mean, Turkey's second division, uh, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's, it's, it's not too bad. There because have been, there have been a lot of Ghanaians at the Turkish yes, second because division. Because I do not want to encourage any Ghanaian top flight to be able to play in to, the second yes, division of Turkey. Yes, yeah. that, that's why. Beyond that, I think it's, it's, a, decent it's, move. it's a decent move. Decent is the word. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's go to Italy and talk briefly about Emmanuel Ajemanbedu. Yeah. Now he has had a torrid twenty-four months or so. It's yeah. not been too pretty mm. for him. Mm. Uh, he's finally been cleared to play uh, football full time. He did yeah. play a couple of games towards the end of last season. He says that he he's he's actually made his loan move to Hellas Verona's yeah. permanent. It looks like he's found a home after. Uh, so many years with Udinese going to Turkey on loan for a bit and then coming back to Italy. But has that deal been concluded? Because yes, yes, he's made it permanent now. Oh, so he's because, now a because, full a full time signing because, of Hellas Verona. Because the last time I I, I had a contact with him, he said it wasn't they they've not concluded the deal and he still he was still a loan player. But Hellas Verona had the option to buy from um Udinese after yeah. that um, um loan move. Yeah. For me, his last, not even 2019 alone, mm -hmm. from 2018, yeah. when he moved to Bes uh, Bessaspor yeah. on loan, he's not had a good season. I mean, you can you permit him. I don't know, he's 29 years. He's, he's played Seems top. like he's been around forever. Exactly, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. He's been at a top level since 2009. Wow. I mean, so true, true. he's played in World Cups. He's played in he's almost played for one all club for them. a decade. Yes, so... It's, I mean, Hellas Verona is, is a cool club for him to, I mean, lay low. And because no, no, it's, wait, wait, say do it. When you say cool club no, to you lay see, low, what do you mean? I mean, he, it will be difficult for him at this stage to, uh, to be attracted Attract to the prime Juventus. To, and in fact, he has said somewhere that he wants to retire in Italy. And so if you want to retire in Italy, we are looking at Juventus, Inter Milan, AC Milan, probably yeah. Atalanta, probably Fiorentina. Lazio, Fiorentina. Lazio, yeah. Roma. Yeah. I, I those, those are not teams that will come for those are not teams that will come for advisedly yeah. an African at age 29 uh, especially when he's played close to 8 years in Udini y you get it mm -hmm. why is Kuda someone struggling to get a team in, in Italy yeah. because maybe I'll have to move a bit to Kuda Samoa Kuda has more than 250 matches in Serie A yeah. so he should be a legend of Serie A how many Italians play more, over, over 200 matches in, in their Serie A? True. So, if he is not even fit to play in Inter, mm -hmm. any of the top teams should have been considering him. Yeah. The teams that but, are considering him are teams like Croton. I mean, <laughs> so, that interest disappointed yes, me a little. Even, even in Turkey, look at the teams that are interested in, 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 in his services. So, I think Adjuan Bedou has offered all that he could in, in, the, um, in the Serie A. I mean, yes, in the Serie A, which... Um, Udini, 
he helped Ver- Verona in his few the few months that he went yeah. on until he got um, I mean he got those uh, infection. Yeah. Now he's back. How well is he back? That's the question to ask after not playing for quite some time. Uh-huh. So I mean, you, you see the likes of Ajima Medu, the likes of Goya Samoa. I I am usually passionate about players we can include in our national team. Yeah. But for Ajima Medu, you feel like they are past their prime. Exactly. Even Ajima Medu will tell. Will, will, no, it's he not said convincing. that he says that he if, if he, he doesn't play for the national exactly. team again, he's fine. Yes. So such players do not have that high level of passion to compete, to kill themselves, to die for, to die for the game. They only want to sustain their their playing career at a certain level. So. Hellas Verona is for me cool. I think that's, for the key, that's the key yeah. phrase there. Sustain their career yeah. at, um, at a certain, at a certain level. level. Yes. Mm. Because I doubt his agent will even be inquiring about, about opportunities in any of the 10 top teams yeah. in, in Syria. Mm. I doubt. I doubt. The, the only available option will be to go to Turkey, where they, seek, they mm-hmm. seem to mm-hmm. appreciate yeah. the, some of these qualities. Because see, La Liga, True. no. Even French league, ah, nope. which nope. has been termed yeah. term the, the, farmers, the league. farmers league. They will come for you. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's talk about Patrick Chumessi briefly. Yes. Once upon a time, not too long ago, actually, was playing for a club in uh, Kazakhstan. Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan, yeah. Yes, Astana. Uh, uh, yeah, Astana. Big club. They used to yeah. pay, they paid good money. Moved to Spain to yes. play for Alaves. Alaves. Looks like the move has gone in the wrong direction. He's moved again. <laughs> To Hanover 96, who are playing in the Bundesliga. That's a loan deal. I, yeah. I, 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 I am not too happy with this particular progress. Well, I think, I, I, in terms of country wide, in terms of league wise, I, I, I am okay with the, with the progress. From because, Alaves to Hanover 96? You, you see, Hanover were eliminated, uh, relegated two seasons yep, ago in the seasons Bundesliga. Ago. Yeah. They, have, they, have, they have ambition of returning to the Bundesliga. And if you have such a club, for me, Anuba is a big club. I mean, compared they are, to Alaves, they are traditional club, yes, definitely. Compared to Alaves, compared to, I, in fact, let's not even bring Astana in the picture. <laughs> My worry Astana's is that, money was good, though. Uh, anyway, and he also got the opportunity to play in the Confederate, I mean, Europa Champions League and Champions League for Astana. Yeah, yeah. So the question goes to Chris, um, to Blaster's coach: Does he want a player that plays in a top flight league and not playing the Champions League or the one that is playing a lower? Uh, and he's getting TLA, regular football. And, yes, those are questions or those are, those are analysis we can make in the future. But I think he's becoming a journeyman. Hmm. Those are my worries because yeah. when you move so much, especially into different countries. You lose your focus because you always have to adjust. You now, lose value. You things, lose, things uh, you lose value. You wonder why you are moving. You are, you are moving so yeah. much. So I think he should have. He could have. Uh, don't forget, Alvarez also uh, loaned him. Good. You, you, you understand. Good. So it means that he couldn't make couldn't the mark. M- there. Make the mark. Yeah. And and it's 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 quite understandable to move from Kazakhstan to Spain. Yeah. Yeah. And. Look at the levels. Yeah. I mean, Def- definitely, I mean, it's supposed to be a level up. Uh, uh, so, I, I personally feel uh, going to Hanover 96 is, is a good move. I wish I brought my as, bill. As, no, no, I think it's a good move. Do you know why? Because mm-hmm. I feel that Hanover has that Clouds. big ambition of yeah. returning to the Bundesliga. Yeah. Okay. And just like Paderborn did with Tepete, if you have a club that has the ambition of getting promotion, I mean, they give you lots of opportunities, time, yeah. and and and. and the was immense for Padaman. He was immense for Padaman, and surprisingly, he moved out after they had gained qualification. Yeah. So sometimes it goes again to the contractual issues. Exactly. So I think I am okay with um, um, Patrick Tumesi's move to Hanover, mm. provided he's going to work hard and prove to Ghanaians. In fact, he's one of the few players that anytime there's a caller, people say, "Where is Patrick Tumesi?" I was just about to come to that. <laughs> what, what does this mean for his? Future in CK Connors plans. Well, it I doubt if you to change anything, because from 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 the way CK talks, he seemed to look at to certain standard. We we'll mark so, him by those standards. Yes, we have, yes, obviously we we'll mark him by those. I've said that I have about four of his tips where where we would mark him by those standards. Yeah. So based on the, the way he talks, mm-hmm. it will be very difficult to to. To even propose a player and play in the Bundesliga 2 for him. Well, let's finish off right home here in Africa. And I'm saying that this is a guy that our national team handlers need to look at. I'm telling you, look, I haven't seen a Ghanaian striker with this level of bravado and confidence in a long time. I'm talking about Liberty Professionals, former player, 
Michael Sapong. Now he mm, yeah, went yeah, to yeah, yeah. Rwanda, yeah. made waves in the Rwandan top flight, one top goal scorer, yeah. one best player for his team, and then had a little misunderstanding with his club president and had to move. Now guess what? He's playing for Young African, one of the biggest teams on the continent, yeah. tra uh, traditional side. He scored twice already. Yes, one goal maybe in preseason. You, you, you want to call them younger. Younger. For, 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 yes. for familiarity <laughs> yes, sake. For younger. Sake. He scored once in preseason already. He scored in his first league game already. So he's already looking like a fan favorite for the, for the yeah. team. They, they love him. You know, um, I think uh, it's no more South Africa. The, the hub of football now in, mm. in, in Africa. Down, down Africa is South Tanzania. Yeah. Tanzania. Because... Simba, Yanga, Azam yeah. are doing something, yeah. um, something yeah. big. They are, they are, they are introducing True. almost everything the modern game wants to see. Yeah. Did you see how they, so professional. Yes, did you see how they introduced their newly signed on players this yeah. season? Yep. And for me, yep. Sapon should be good, especially when he's going to play with um, Sonny Akuba, Akuba. former yep. Kumar Sanjiko yep. striker. And so that partnership should be there. Sapon was one of the most talented players I thought Liberty could have kept for a while to lighten our league. But mm. unfortunately, they made good cash out of him. And <laughs> Do you see him leaving Africa in the near future? Or do you think that he was one of those who might end up just roaming among the African elite clubs? You know clubs? what? Players hardly move out of Tanzania because of how they are treated, especially the following base players. Mm. Because if players were to move, the first player to move would have been Bernard Morrison. Yep. Controversial but, but, guy. Move yes, from one giant yes, to the one other. Giant to the other. But, but they treat players so well to the extent that it would take extra effort by any team to, 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 to get pull, him out to, of them. To them. And I'm only looking at teams like TP Mazembe. They have, I think they have a certain relationship with the clubs in Tanzania. Yeah. And for TP Mazembe, once you get there, the opportunity of getting to the Belgian League, the opportunity it's of even playing the uh, North African Leagues is very high. But you ask yourself, would he want to play in any of the, these leagues if he's playing there? Because he gets the opportunity to play in the Champions League hmm. for younger. Yeah. So... so the question is, how much will entice Yanga to be able to release him? Hmm. Those are the questions because they, 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 they also have a certain target of keeping top quality players. Yeah. So I think it, it will, he, he may end up being, being like a legend in, in, in Tanzania. Seru, <laughs> too much information. I've loved every bit of the analysis. I've even couched a few headlines in my oh. mind <laughs> based on the discussion, but you heard the man himself, Seydou Adamu, helping me to dissect the Ghanaian players that are on the move around uh, the world. It's right here on City TV and on the tracker. If you want to know which Ghanaian players or Ghanaian athletes are doing what's where, this is your hub. Same time next week, we'll be back. Stay with us.